All right, GFS, you got the people locked in again. Just, just how it works. Uh, I wanted to kind of just put out a little, I wanted to do a post when I was like, you know, a video would just be easier. And I think you guys like it better when I talk and break things down anyway. So let's just turn it into a small video. So um, 18C GFS, guess what? You get your own video and you got the people's attention because uh, you've been showing some kind of snowstorm now for like uh, four of the past like five runs in this time frame. So we talked about it. You can go check out my YouTube video in case you want, um, you know, a clearer a description of all the elements at play but you know we do have that polar vortex disruption that's going on again it's not it's again it's more focused on the stratosphere and some of those effects um you know you know, will come down and, and affect us um you, you know here in, here in the mid latitudes but um you know so we will feel some some of the effects of this but um again it's not a major um sudden stratospheric warming event but what does happen is um we get a system that comes through you can see that ridge right and that trough that comes through there right it's, that system comes through i'm still curious to see how this plays out i think given the lack of access to cold air um this stays likely in an, in an interior event um, but this could change a good amount. So keep an eye on this time frame still, that 19th to 20th time frame. Um, and then in behind it, the 21st to the 23rd, um, you can see a low, right? See our polar vortex, you know, come down here, right here, that's your polar vortex. Um, you can see, right, we get a stretching event kind of that occurs and that cold air really gets, um, you see it holds too. We get a lobe, right? That trough comes in on the other side, our big old ridge that forms, right? That, you know, we've become, you know, pretty, there's a pretty good idea that a big old Western ridge is gonna form and a pretty solid Eastern ridge is gonna form. The question is, um, what happens in between here? I think that's the big question um, right now. Again, we don't have a guarantee for a snowstorm, but what happens in between here? And again, that will, um, you know, define a lot because if we see high pressure start to build in over, right, and we cut this off here, now we have access to our cold air still. Look at all this access. Look at our 540 line, how deep that is. And that kind of locks the storm in. So you can press this ridge real, real nice. You can get real vertical with your ridge too. Really drop in, um, you know, drop in th th this 500 volt here, and you can really get a pretty strong dynamic system, while also with access to cold air. And really, the question is for if southern um, places get involved or not, is if you want this trot, you want this uh, this ridge here to continue to gain in height, um, but you also want to lock in um, your eastern ridge here. Um, again, these two can kind of play a cat and mouse game a little bit. And again, you can still get a snowstorm even if this is more stretched out, but you'll need to thread the needle a little bit more. Um, you'll need the timing um, with where the ridge is placed. Uh, the ridges are placed. You'll need the timing um, to be, you know, to be pretty well suited for this. So um, again, um, we don't know if a snowstorm a big snowstorm is going to be happening or not but there is certainly a ceiling especially if we lock this was a, this is a key part here some um you know on the ensembles it's harder to say it just looks like consistent blue all the way through because there's a spread of so many models in between um so it's hard to say and even again even if you have this this doesn't mean you still can't get a snowstorm it's still possible here you can do it you just got to thread the needle a little bit more here with where your ridges are placed the strength um the, the timing uh, of how how the ridge how the ridge is strengthening as well in the location um you know how vertical and you know how much width we see with um you know our ridges here and that will define uh, the amplitude you know the, the depth of our trough here um and also you know how this sets up because if you do get this to build in now you have high pressure all around and you force this thing to slow down completely and you make it difficult this western ridge makes it really hard for this storm to be able to cut um, the more you press it in this eastern ridge pressing here and especially if it builds in now the storm has nowhere to go right it can't cut it has nowhere to go but slow down somewhere around oh, 
from the east east coast or off the east coast potentially and that is your path to getting a significant snowstorm other models have um you know different ideas uh but the same the, uh, so looks like models are honing in on relatively somewhere of this idea the setup the pieces are there on the table it seems like now models are honing in the question is um what exactly are we going to have to work with you know as we get closer you know especially you know, once we get within five days we're still um eight nine days out from this so we're still super far so don't worry about what these p-type maps show precipitation maps uh type these precipitation type maps show just you know focus on the pieces at hand and you can get a snowstorm on this you can but be patient see how things turn out again whenever you have polar vortex disruptions involved um it can get a little bit uh, messy and there is a lot of lot going on in the pacific as well right now too so some things still need to be cleared up um but be patient this is interesting this is interesting i was gonna go live tonight anyways but you know i think i will definitely go live to kind of where uh you know get control of the masses a little bit right a little bit of hysteria is probably going to go on from this run um so yeah those are my thoughts